Okay, so first I took some of the buildings from my building pack. If you want these buildings, you can get them on Patreon or Gumroad and started modifying them to look a little bit bigger, like taking the rooftop structures and scaling them down and duplicating them. Since I was looking at some reference of the buildings from Tokyo 3, there was these angles around the top and the sides of the buildings have these large flat spaces. My buildings have too many windows because they were originally designed for my Akira renders. <laughs> So I created some geometric planes to cover them up. I took some of the concrete textures from this big medium small asset because it had the perfect grungy industrial look. I ended up squishing the buildings by half in one direction just to give it some more variety for later. Then I added a bit of variety to the roof structures and added these antennas with red lights on top. I also deleted like half of the faces of the buildings because it would just make it a little bit more optimized since I knew I was going to be duplicating them and I didn't know how much I was going to duplicate them. So it just makes it a little bit easier for me. I also knew that these buildings would mostly be silhouetted and not be the focus of the animation. So I just kind of got rid of that stuff. Then I jumped straight into the layout. So I set my resolution for portrait mode and start roughly blocking out the foreground buildings, keeping in mind that I basically want three layers. The buildings in the foreground, the Ava in the middle, and a set of buildings in the background. So then I start populating the foreground and the background with just a few more buildings from my building pack. If you want these buildings, you can get them on Patreon or Gumroad. Uh, I take a couple of these buildings and modify them more here and there to make them look a little bit more blocky like they do in the reference. After I'm happy with the buildings for the most part, I bring in the Ava. Once I had all the elements in place, it was time to start getting an idea for the camera movement. I knew I wanted the camera to be doing something similar to what I've done in the past with like a revealing motion. So I start the camera low and then pan up to see the Ava kind of across these building rooftops. And I also wanted the buildings to be animating to reveal the Ava, almost like a curtain being pulled aside to show the main stage. So it's a lot of letting the camera loop over and over and over again and making minor tweaks each loop fixing tangents, covering up missing spots, making sure all that is in my scene is visible by the camera. If it's outside the camera shot and never seen in the animation, I get rid of it. So my process is basically the same for every element, the buildings, the composition, the camera, the lighting. I get what I need into the scene up to like 80%. And then I move on to the next element and do the same. Then once everything is at, you know, 80% more or less, I spend the rest of the time tweaking everything all at once, little by little. So here I move on to turning on Eevee and start setting up the scene with the lighting and the environment. The first thing I do is bring in the largest element, which is the volume. It's a classic volume scatter node, nothing too complicated there. I then bring in just like a single large area light for uplighting on the Ava. That's how majority of the lighting is going to be in the scene. So just getting those really simple elements in early. By the way, I hate the new shade smooth thing in 4.1. Like, I don't know, I don't know what was wrong with it in the past. It was a single click. Now it doesn't always work. It makes the model look weird and I gotta get in there and fix it. It makes the edges sharp for some reason and I gotta unsharpen them. It just messes with the flow of everything and now I gotta relearn how to use it properly. Like, I'm sure it's good for the long term of Blender and they know what they're doing, but uh, for me, it's like, it's less of a convenience to use it than it was before. I don't know. I'm sure I'll come around. Next, I changed the green bits on the Ava to glow a little bit like they do in the anime. I think it also adds a cool glow to everything else being dark. This kicks off the lighting and environment work. I get the volume to look nice and foggy and soft between the buildings especially, which adds the sense of scale. I start giving each building its own area light for uplighting. Each building having its own light is also important for something I made note of in my last video which was using light and dark areas to create layers. So the light from the bottom of the building makes the top of the building dark, which is silhouetted against the light from the building behind it and so on. This was the overall lighting direction I was working with for the whole scene. For the background elements, like the distant hills and sky, I had a couple ideas 
Uh, and for the hills, I ended up just using a single plane with the shape of some really basic hills at the top. I wanted to uplight it, but it felt too flat and like, I don't know, kind of simple and easy. So instead, I went with a much more complicated and time-consuming method that I was less familiar with just to get the same result. <laughs> ah, classic ego artist bullshit. Anyway. Um, so for the sky, it was a pretty simple shader node setup. I went with a linear gradient, kind of like just duplicating the same thing I had for the hills, but with a light blue at the bottom and a dark green at the top. And then I wanted some of these faint wispy clouds over top of everything. So to do that, I combined two principled BSDF textures. One was controlling the gradient and the other one was providing the noise texture for the clouds. I also used the noise texture as the factor in the mixed shader node so that the white parts, so that only like the white parts would show up and everything else would be masked out. Once I had all the elements, like I said, to like 80%, um, the rest of the time was spent on making minor adjustments to lighting, to composition, to colors, and making everything look good for the camera. I wanted the Ava to have really good uplighting. I wanted some parts to stay in shadow, but some parts to be lit up. So kind of playing with the lighting there, duplicating some parts, making some, some light elements, area light versus point light, all these kinds of things. Um, then at one point I tested having some of the angels in the scene. I won't even try to pronounce this one's name. Satchel? Satchel? I don't know. I'm not, I don't. I must have missed that part when they pronounced it. Although it looks freaking awesome. God, it looks so sick. And I really wanted to have them in. But then I thought like, let, let's make this a series. Let's make two or three more renders. And in those, we'll introduce this second character. It didn't work for this one because it felt too crowded. And I noticed myself start to gravitate towards making it work, which risked just changing the entire scene. So I left him out for this render, but I definitely plan on including him in the next one. Uh, by the way, I want to give a shout out to Henyang. I, th I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, dude. I'm sorry if I'm butchering your name. Uh, trust me, I know what that feels like. <laughs> so he is the person that I'm essentially doing this collaboration with. So he went straight into making the angel model, uh, textured it, rigged it, everything like that. He even went out of his way to rig the Ava model that I had, which was previously unrigged. So, you know, just what a, you know, what a nice and talented and handsome guy. Uh, this guy's awesome. Definitely follow him. He's super, he's a, he's a concept artist. He's awesome. Just, you, you should be following him if you're not already. I really wanted the, the two of them to work in this one scene because having it adds so much room for story and it just makes me really excited for this collab, but uh, it just ended up not working for this specific shot. I will definitely be including the angel and their interaction in the future renders. So trying to add the angel gave me an idea to animate the Ava subtly. So it gave me the idea to make it look like the Ava was like rising or looking up kind of, which is actually a capability I never really had before the model got rigged. Uh, I really like the idea not just of the city moving, but also of the Ava. And it just really added a lot more movement to the animation that I couldn't really get before. So yeah, that's that's pretty much how I created the whole animation. Keep a lookout for the next one in the series coming out very, very soon on my Insta. I'll also upload a couple of wallpapers. There are so many cool shots, individual shots from this render that I personally want to have as wallpapers. So I'll go ahead and share them with the community too. If you want to stay updated on my work, Patreon and Insta are probably the two best places. Uh, Patreon just has a lot more like behind the scenes content, files, all this kind of stuff. I also have a Discord server in which you can join and chat with other artists, uh, share your work, learn, all kinds of stuff like that. Okay, that's it. See ya. Those are all my slime noises. That's the best I can do. If anyone can do better slime noise, uh, DM me on Instagram.